This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and this is our Game Salad Vertical Shooter tutorial. This is episode 9. We're going to be adding an invulnerability to the player when he first spawns so that he doesn't immediately get killed, and we're also going to be adding some power-ups in this episode. If you have not completed the other episodes, I recommend that you go back to episode 1 and work your way through. If you want to start from where you're at right now, you can download the template from monkeyuncle.com. So we're here in our vertical shooter 008, which is what we had from last time. I want you to go ahead and uh, do a file, save as, and we're going to name this 009. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go into the player actor. We're going to add an attribute. We're going to add a real attribute because this is going to be a timer. We're going to call it invulnerable timer. And unlike some of the other timers, we don't need to set this. It's fine the way it is. Um, at a value of zero because we're going to set it as soon as we come in using a change attribute. So up here at the very top, we're going to go ahead and go down to player, vulnerable timer, and set that to player time plus two. Now you can play around with the setting. Uh, I think two is really generous. Um, I think one can sometimes be too short. By the time you register where you are on the screen, you're already back to being vulnerable and you get killed. So let's leave it at two. You can feel free to modify it yourself. So now we set this as we come in. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a rule. And we're going to say if player and vulnerable timer is greater than player time, meaning that this invulnerability is active. What we're going to do is we're going to cause this to flicker. All right. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to drag on a timer okay and we're gonna have it do it every 0 0.1 so every tenth of a second this timer is going to run and what it's going to do is let's go ahead and create another rule we're gonna drag this rule into the timer and we're gonna say if attribute player color alpha now we used that before that's whether or not it's visible so if it's equal to zero meaning it's invisible then we're going to do a change attribute I'm going to change player color alpha to one now if it's not equal to zero then we can assume that it's one and we're going to change it to zero basically this is going to cause it to blink every tenth of a second. Okay? We'll just call this blink. Now, if invulnerable timer is not greater, that means the invulnerability is no longer active. So let's change this attribute in case it accidentally got stuck invisible. We're going to change color alpha to 1. Okay, so it'll always be visible when it's not invulnerable. All right, and then what we also want to do is we want to grab these all the, these explode conditions. We don't want those to happen when he's invulnerable, so we're going to drag these down into the otherwise. So if he's vul invulnerable, we're going to just make him blink. If he's not invulnerable then we're going to make them visible you can actually just make visible and check 
for collisions. All right. So let's go ahead and save this, and we'll give it a test run. Of course, I have. He started off blinking. No, he's not. Oh, and I died. Now, as you can see, I'm blinking, and I did get hit. I died again, now I'm blinking, I got hit twice there, and now I'm not, and I'm dead. So it is working, and we might even want to bump that up to three, but we'll leave it the way it is right now. So that's the first part. We just added the invulnerability, but now we're going to add a power-up, because games like this have power-ups. So let's create the actor for the power-up. We're going to call it, obviously enough, power-up. We're going to go into power-up. We're going to go back into our space shooter and we actually have a power up directory and I'm just going to, for contrast, I'm going to choose the bolt gold and drag it over. Now I have to know that this is 19 by 30. Okay. And this is not going to do much. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to set the linear velocity y, remember that's vertical movement, to, it's going down screen, so we're going to set it to negative 150. Okay? And now, of course, we need to do our little housekeeping. So let's go ahead and create a rule. We're going to say if attribute power up position y is less than, remember we're going down off the screen, so this is going to be equal to negative height, so it needs to be completely off the screen. Okay, we're going to change this to any. Okay, because we also want it to disappear on another condition, and that condition is it touches the player. So if it's off the screen or if it touches the player, we want to go ahead and destroy it. Let's file, save that. So now we have a power up actor, but it doesn't do anything. Not only does it not do anything, it has no way of appearing. So let's go ahead and make it appear and what we're going to do is when we kill enemy number two okay, we're going to have it spawn and this is really easy because we come in here with collides with laser really all, or player but if it collides with the player you probably won't have time to pick it up. What we're going to do is we're just going to again we're going to use our shortcut we're going to Duplicate this. Okay. The spawn actor kind of went in the wrong spot, so we're just going to drag it to where we want it. There we go. So before we spawn the explosion, we're going to spawn the power up. Now, X and Y, we want it to be exactly where the enemy was, so these are perfect. So now we spawn the power up, and then we spawn the explosion, and then it destroys itself whenever we collide with a laser or a player. So let's just see how that works right now. So now remember that's only that's only enemy two which is the one that fires. Well there's one that fires. Oh there and I must have hit it because there, oh, there's one. Oh I got it. Vulnerability is working at least. And as you can see, we're picking them up. They're disappearing. And I'm dead. All right. So now we need to make that power up do something. So oftentimes, power up will control the amount of either lasers or different types of weapons. We're going to have it control the number. Of lasers that we fire. So we're going to choose an integer 
and we're going to give it a name. This is in the player object. We're going to give it the name Power Up. You can name it anything. We're going to leave it at zero. That's fine. It's a little bit less work for us. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create some rules. Okay. So first of all, we need to create a rule so that when the actor, the player, touches a power-up, we're going to do something. Okay, But we're going to have three separate stages. So we will fire one laser from the middle, two lasers from each of the wings, or three lasers, two from the wings and one from the center. So that's three states. So if we start at zero, that's zero, one, and two. So we don't want it to increase the power up if we're already at two. So we're going to say, add this, if attribute player power up is less than two. Okay, if it's less than two, if it's less than two, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a change attribute. And we're going to change this power up attribute to player power up plus one. Okay, so now that power up's going to it's going to pick up that power up and it's going to change that value. So now we have to do something based on that value. Well, this is where we fire our lasers. Right now we're firing two lasers. So let's come here. Let's create a rule and say when attribute player power up equals zero, okay, this is firing the center, central layer. Again, I'm going to drag this down, drag and copy, all right, and right now this is set, if you can tell, it's there's a plus self x self width divided by two. So this is actually the right laser. So we're just going to change that, get rid of the width, the plus, and that's going to fire the laser from the middle. Okay. Now we're going to duplicate this rule, and we're going to say if it's one. I'm going to fire the side lasers. Okay. So we can get rid of the middle laser. And we're going to actually just drag both of these down. Let's just make sure I dragged. We have minus and plus so that's both sides all right and i believe this one was the left and this one was the right all right and of course the final option is fire all lasers and what we can do is we're just going to take this center laser here going to duplicate that and drag it down to the bottom and we're going to change this to two so one we fire center laser two we fire the side lasers and three we fire all three lasers now we need to place those where we did where we had the spawn lasers before so I'm going to delete these spawn lasers and I'm going to pull our wools up So now we have 
up here is where we do the sound effect. Down here is where we set the timer. In between, we have conditions for all of the power up states. So now we're going to come in. We're going to start our game. We should be firing one laser from the center. Okay, hopefully I just hit one. Now I'm firing two lasers. And I picked up another one, and we have three lasers. And there we have it. You've got power ups and invulnerability. And that's it for episode nine. We will see you in episode 10. And remember, this is John Cressman with monkeyuncle.com. All of our tutorials are available on our site.